You're doing pretty well for a first-timer. Well, you can't hold on to him forever, can you? Nemo is the title character in Finding Nemo, and Dory gets the spotlight in Finding Dory. But those titles kind of overlook the important role that another character plays in this story, Marlin. Yeah, a fish can breathe out here. Did your man deliver, or did he deliver? The first movie, at least, might be more accurately called Finding Marlin. The journey to find Nemo is really about Marlin figuring out how to be the best dad he can be. In a couple of days, we're gonna be parents. Yeah. What if they don't like me? Marlin. Oh, really? In order to do that, he has to accept that Nemo is his own person and realize that sheltering his son will only prevent Nemo from forming a healthy relationship with the world. But dude, how do you know when they're ready? Well, you never really know, but when they know, you'll know, you know? Oh. In the end, Marlin saves the day by becoming a confident role model and showing that good parenting is truly a heroic feat. Marlin's key struggle is one that every parent faces. He loves Nemo so much that his impulse is to protect him from everything. I promise I will never let anything happen to you, Nemo. But like all parents, he has to learn to distinguish between when this instinct is helpful and when it becomes detrimental. You think you could do these things, but you just can't, Nemo! It's hard not to think of your child as an extension of yourself. But having a kid means raising someone with their own personality, desires, and autonomy. Nemo can't develop his own independence, with Marlin always standing in the way. You know you can't swim well. I can swim fine, Dad, okay? So even though accepting your child's autonomy is scary, it's important to let go enough for them to form their own experiences. Kill the motor, dude. Let us see what Squirt does flying solo. That's hard for all parents. But it's uniquely difficult for Marlin because of his personal history. At the beginning of the movie, Marlin is defined by the past trauma of losing his wife and all of his other kids in a barracuda attack. Coral, get inside the house, Coral. No, no, Coral, don't. They'll be fine. Just get inside you right now. That's why he's a helicopter parent with Nemo. Can I go play too? Can I? I would feel better if you go play over on the sponge beds. <gasps> <laughs> this tragedy has shaped his view of the world, which he believes is a hostile, dangerous place. Now, what's the one thing we have to remember about the ocean? It's not safe. The vast ocean setting helps us see through Marlin's eyes. We can imagine how stressful it would be to raise a child in an endless open ocean. So we partake in his heightened anxiety. On top of all of this, his one remaining kid, Nemo, has a disability. His right fin was damaged in the attack. <laughs> What's wrong with his fin? He looks funny! Ow! Hey, what'd I do? What'd I do? Be nice. It's his first time at school. He was born with it, kids. We call it his lucky fin. Dad. So Marlin's worry for his son is justified. Just as many parents will feel, understandably, that anxiety over their children is warranted due to specific disabilities or disadvantages. But Marlin's belief that imminent danger lurks around every corner shapes all of his decisions. It makes him hold Nemo back from doing normal things, like going to school. Are you sure you want to go to school this year? Because there's no problem if you don't. You can wait five or six years. Come on, Dad, it's time for school. Marlin's overprotective attitude backfires and puts his son at risk because it breeds resentment. I hate you. Which makes Nemo rebel and get captured by the divers in the first place. Don't touch the book. Nemo! He touched the button. So Marlin's past seeps into his present in pretty harmful ways. No, Dad! Just because you're scared of the ocean... Clearly you're not ready and you're not coming back until you are. All parents want their kids to avoid the traumas they've experienced. But the specific challenges we faced are unlikely to be the primary threats confronting our children. Letting the past dictate the way we view our kids' lives can do more harm than good. And maybe he wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been so tough on him. I don't know. Kids need to face hardships in order to grow. 
and we can't isolate them from the great big ocean of life. The ocean, silly. We're not the only two in here. Dory is the perfect guide to help Marlin overcome his past. No fish in this entire ocean is gonna help me. Well, I'm helping you. She's his exact opposite. Because of her short-term memory loss, she's living entirely in the present. No, it's true. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Um, hmm. Where are they? Even though her lack of memory is a disability and makes her life hard in other ways, she shows Marlon what it means to let go of what's behind him and live the moment in front of him. You want to get out of here, don't you? Of course I do. Well then, how are we going to do that unless we give it a shot and hope for the best? She sees the true value of minute-to-minute -minute experiences because they're all she has. Wow, a whale. You know, I speak whale. And that opens Marlon's eyes to the fact that he's been making Nemo miss out on life. I promised him I'd never let anything happen to him. Huh. That's a funny thing to promise. What? Huh? Well, you can't never let anything happen to him. Then nothing would ever happen to him. Just Keep Swimming has become a famous mantra in recent years. It reminds us to persevere through difficult situations and stay optimistic when things look darkest. Two lessons that Marlin desperately needs to learn. Keep swimming! Just keep swimming! In order to just keep swimming, you have to have faith that things will work out, even if you can't yet see the path you need to take. Everything's gonna be all right! How do you know? How do you know something bad isn't gonna happen? Marlin can't bear anything that's not in his control. To him, everything that happens is just another opportunity for things to go wrong. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live. Hop in your mouth, huh? And how does that make me live? So he needs to learn how to trust. Trust you. Yes, trust. It's what friends do. By not trusting, he drives Nemo away and ends up hurting Dory. When he finally trusts his son and his friend, he gets a happy ending. I can do this! You're right. I know you can. Dory also teaches Marlin the power of optimism in tough times. Optimism is what helps Dory think outside the box. Maybe he only speaks whale. We need uh, Dory. To find what are you doing? What are you doing? Marlin's always too wrapped up in the consequences of his actions to solve problems creatively, until Dory inspires him to start treating challenges like a game. Dory, all right, listen to me. I, I have an idea. Uh, a game. A game. A game. A game. Yes. Ah, I love games. Pick me. This helps Marlin to be brave and actually move forward instead of drowning in anxiety. Swim down together! Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Swim down! These new skills that Dory draws out from Marlin make him better equipped to be a good dad. For one thing, they help him actually find Nemo and complete his quest. Thank goodness. It's all right, son. It's gonna be okay. And they also help him channel his love for his son into a more productive outlet expressing his love as trust and optimism rather than fear turns him into a hero who can take on sharks, jellyfish, or anything that stands in his family's way. Seriously, Marty, did you really do all the things you say you did? Uh, pardon me. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> By the end of the movie, Nemo sees his dad as a role model, instead of as someone who's terrified of the world. Sea turtles? I met one, and he was 150 years old. 150? Yep. Marlin needs to set this example for Nemo to learn to believe in himself. Parents have to show their kids that the world isn't just a scary place. Otherwise, kids will grow up insecure and unsure of their own capabilities. Leave them on a beach to hatch, and then coo coo ca -choo, they find their way back to the big old blue. All by themselves? Ja. How kids view their parents shapes a lot about who they are. At Nemo's age, which is roughly the age of a number of kids in the audience, seeing your parents as heroes is an important part of development. 
Watching their parents take on the world gives kids the confidence to do so themselves. Early in the film, Marlin hasn't been setting that example for Nemo. So Nemo's left feeling the same lack of control his father feels. I can't go with that girl! I have to get back to my dad! Oh, oh, dad! Help me! He feels hopeless and abandoned, unprotected despite his father's urgent desire to protect. You're lucky to have someone out there who's looking for you. He's not looking for me. He's scared of the ocean. Psychology studies different kinds of attachment patterns between parents and children, which set the standard for how the child forms relationships. Secure attachment, which is the ideal, means that the child sees the parents as a safe, soothing home base they can come back to, while the kid comfortably goes out into the world. Oh, hey Dad, did you see that? Did you see me? Did you see what I did? You so totally rock, squirt! So give me some fin. Noggin. But Marlin is so frightened of the world that he's mainly a source of fear for Nemo. You're not going to freak out like you did at the petting zoo, are you? Hey, that snail was about to charge. So without a secure home base, Nemo is likely to form a more confused, ambivalent relationship with the greater world. On first viewing, it's tempting to say that Gil is the one who helps Nemo overcome his timidness, since he initially pushes Nemo out of his comfort zone. Can you help me? No. You get yourself in there, you can get yourself out. But the first time Gil asks Nemo to jam the filter, Nemo doesn't believe in himself. I can't do it! And when he fails, the other fish in the tank don't think he can do it either. Gil, don't make him go back in there. <laughs> no. We're done. No one in Nemo's life trusts his abilities because of his bad fin. And Nemo doesn't trust himself to succeed because he's been brought up to think that taking risks will lead to disaster. Have you ever met a shark? No, and I don't plan to. That only starts to change when he gets word of his dad's adventures. It's my dad! He took on a shark! I heard he took on three. Hearing about his dad crossing the ocean to find him gives him the courage to try to escape again. So for parents, the lesson here is that the way you approach life will directly influence your kids. Leading by example is really the only way to prove to a child that they're up to the challenge of navigating this world independently. Bye, son! Have fun! Bye, Dad! Finding Nemo gets at the heart of every parent's fears and insecurities. It asks the terrible question, what if I can't protect my child? And the answer is that you can't shelter your child from every possible disaster. Nemo, don't move! Don't move! You'll never get out of there yourself. I'll do it. But great parenting demands a blind leap of faith. It's impossible to anticipate every challenge your child might run up against. The best you can do is to fight the urge to overprotect. Let trust and optimism guide you and be the person you want your kids to take after. If you just keep swimming, you'll find your way to a safe, happy home within that big, scary ocean. Love you, Dad. I love you too, son. Hi guys, Susanna and Deborah here. If you like what we do and you want to help us grow, one of the best things you can do is support us on Patreon. We make special polls for our patrons where you can vote for a video you want us to make. And right now we're giving away three free months of MUBI, a really fantastic movie streaming service. Love MUBI. We're such fans. Awesome. And we're giving that away to a limited number of patrons, so be one of the first to go check it out. The link is right here. 